today, and I thank you for this mighty man of God that's coming forth. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen, amen. All right, let's all stand and give Kenny a warm welcome. Woo-woo! Hallelujah. Well, friends and family, how excited are we to be here today? All right. Well, who came to play church? Oh, that's what I like to see. All right. So that means we all on one accord. You see, you know, sometimes what the devil will do is he'll say things right at a right moment to make you assume that he's going to say something else. To get you out there to say, oh, I agree. And then all of a sudden you're out there in the water because you, now you don't agree with something crazy. You see, but that's our mindset. That's how we think. We, um, it's a documented statement that was put out that says a uh, human mind is so complex, it really only hears three or four of the words that are spoke to it. It fills in the rest. So when we're speaking... You hear like maybe two or three words and then your mind puts the rest of the sentence together. So that's why it's so important for us to hear from the spirit. Because your mind is carnal. It's made of this world, flesh and blood. And its, uh, it's job is to fight against the things of the spirit. Now, not because, you know, that's the way it was made. It's because it's here living in, it's, the, it's produced by the rules of this world. So what's happening is as your spirit is speaking to you, your mind can't comprehend everything that it's saying. So what it does is it reverts back to its law. And it says, okay, well, that must mean that this is going on. So now your spirit is over here like, you know, okay, well, I, I don't think that's what was supposed to be happening and something's wrong. We need, a, we need a disconnect. We need to get back to here and we're over here. What's, what's going on? Come on, hurry up. So it was great what Pastor Greg said when he said, you know, people are not looking for you personally. They're looking for your spirit. They should never even see you. They should see your spirit. And so what happens it, you know, I used to think it was funny when people come up to me, never met me before in life, and they're like, you know, mom used to talk about it all the time, and I thought it was funny until it happened to me, and she's like, you know, you're standing in a grocery store, and somebody comes up, and you're like, hey, how you doing? Well, my granddaughter ran off with this guy, and, and you're like sitting there, and you got to be someone, you're like, oh my God, I didn't mean I wanted you to tell me your life story. I just, you know, how you doing? That's, that's it. But, you know, I was like, you know, I don't got time for all that. And God said, you know, what are you here for? Isn't that your commission? You know, don't, don't be mad at them because they're, they're talking to you. See, they're feeling that you have the answer that they need. You see, but a lot of times we don't really want to give the answer. Because if we give somebody the answer, that means we have to live in the answer. You know, it's hard for me to tell my friends and family, hey, don't get upset. It's hard for me to tell my son, who was a carbon copy of me. The, the old and the new. You know, he's coming, but there's some, still some things he struggles with, and I'm just going to be real honest, and I know he's not mad at me. You know, he get royalties, as my mom says. You know, you, you'll, you'll get a little something from this. But, um, you know, it's one thing to say, hey, don't get mad. Don't be like that. Don't have an attitude. If every time he sees me, all I have is an attitude. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And I'm mad all the time. You know, he might listen to me at first because he's like, okay, he's dad. I got to do what he says. But after a while, he's going to be like, man, you, you don't, don't talk to me about no attitude. You have an attitude every time I see you. You know, you, so you got to do some different things. So that's the reason for the lessons that we've been having. You know, what pastor says is, you know, you need to put your faith in action. action. All right. See, y'all on it. That's what I like to see. You know, we're not just practicing church up in here. We live in church. You know, we try to do what we say we're going to do. Now, so what God was telling me was, you know, it's great that you're, you guys are saying that. You're saying all the right things, doing all the right things. But now I need you to teach them how to put their faith in action. And I was like, you know, uh, I mean, hey, God, I've struggled with that too. And he's like, who better else to say something than the one who I've had the most trouble trying to get to do it? <laughs> I was like, all right, I, I get that, God, okay. I'm with that. So 
the lesson plan for today is just three little steps that we want to give you to help you on the journey of activating your faith. The first one, it's, um, it's going to give you the reason why faith is so important. You know, it's easy to say, you know, you should do this or you should do that because that's the way we do it. But especially nowadays in these times, they're going to want to say, well, why do we do that? What's the reason for that? You know, you need to have an understanding of why you're doing something. Because if you're just doing something just because, just, oh, I just felt like doing it, then you're not walking in the purpose. Because God has enlightened your steps. He set your steps. So he's got a, a specific place he needs you to be going. So when you take it upon yourself to go somewhere else, that's all you. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. Some people might not want to hear that, but that's all them. That's why it's important to be in the spirit. Because anybody can get up here and speak to you, and they can read out of the word. And it be, you know, pretty much correct. But see, the word is ever living. And that's hard, to, that's hard for our minds to con concept because it's a book. In our, in our carnal state, we look at it as a book. But see, God said, we live off every spoken word that comes out of his mouth. This is the spoken word that comes out of his mouth. So it ever changes from day to day. So what you read in here today may not be the same thing you read in there tomorrow. So if the only thing you're doing is getting up here and teaching somebody from the word, then you're only giving them 50% of what they're supposed to be getting. Because in order to activate the rest of the word that's in here, you got to be in the spirit. Because, see, when Jesus, when Jesus was going to the cross, he said, you know, I'm getting ready to lay it all down for y'all. But there's going to be one that comes after me that's going to have every understanding to everything you need to do. Because he knew that his, the, the carnal flesh man that he was held to this earth with was leaving. So that means there was not going to be any um, physical representation of him. So we were going to have to understand how to get to that other side, to that spiritual side. The other part is that is we want to teach you how to put your faith in action. You know, it's, it's another thing to say, you know, let's put our faith in action. And everybody's like, okay, if, if I get up and tell you, hey, we're going uh, we gonna, to we gonna start these cars. But if I don't ever show y'all how the car starts or give you a key, yeah. it ain't no cars going to get started. And then the last one is what it looks like when your faith is put in action. Because there's a distinguished look. It's not just, you know, it's not the same thing as every day. It looks different. So the title of my message today is going to be Faith in Action, the Cause and Effect. See, there has to be a cause. There's a reason why you're going to put your faith in action. And then there has to be something that, that faith in action produces. That's going to be a cause, the cause and effect. I don't know if you all have heard that. You know, one of my favorite subjects was, in, was science in, in high school. So, you know, for every action, there's a reaction. There's a cause and effect. So what happens when you do this? What effect does it have on the situation? Well, see, because we live on two different planes, the cause and reaction doesn't exist. Okay, so look, 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 go with me for a minute. We are a spiritual being. We are made in God's image. But we are set apart down here in these fleshly bodies. Now, the rule of the world is everything that you can see, touch, smell is governed by one rule. And you have to line up with that rule. But see, what happened was Jesus got the keys to that. And he says, so anybody who is with me don't operate by these rules. They operate by something else. See, but you have to be in him to not operate by these rules. So what happens is when you're in him and you're operating different, you change. The, come on. Come on. 
Come on now. It, it, it should be getting good to somebody because, you know, I know the doctor done told somebody that they don't got long to live. He done told somebody that because of all of the bad stuff that they did in their life, now they're being visited by something dark. But see, God said, I have made a bridge, a way for you to have to operate by that. And once you get under that bridge and you start to move, you automatically start to change your situation. Woo, okay, so, you know, my first scripture, because I don't want you to think that I'm just getting up here and telling you something. I do read the word, and uh, I do believe what it says. You know, it, it, my first one is from Romans, and it's 4 and 16 and 19. And um, this is why your faith is so important. So it says, therefore, it is a faith that I might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. That's it. The seed is us. The seed through Abraham. Not to be that only which is of the law, but to, the, to that also which is of the law of Abraham, who is the father of us all. 17 says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quenches the death and calleth those things which not be as though they were. Okay, so that's the important part. Only Jesus, the Father, God, can call things as if they were, but they're not. He's because he's, he's, he's Alpha, he's Omega. He's seen the end, he's seen the beginning. So he has the ability to change everything. We, we don't have that down here when we're under the, these laws. But see, when we get into the spirit, now we start to step on the, onto his blessings and his plan, then we can change that situation because we can do it through the seed. We're the seed. So we've been, we've been inheritedly given the ability to change our situation. So then it says in uh, 18, who against hope believed in hope that, the, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. <coughs> Excuse me. Being not weak in flesh, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was almost a hundred years old, neither yet darkness, or, I'm sorry, deadness of Sarah's womb. So basically what that's saying is even though Abraham was an old man, it was, I think he was like a hundred and something, yeah, he's a hundred, and Sarah was, you know, way past, you know, that, that time that she should be even thinking about some kids, he, he, he stepped out and he believed. He said, you know what, God said this was going to happen, so therefore it's done. You know, that takes a special type of belief, especially in those days. You know, they didn't have the same things that we have now. You know, these modern technologies that, you know, oh, okay, well, that might be, they might be able to do that. You know, back then, you know, they put some rocks together with some sticks and, you know, they, oh, I don't know how to help you, bro. When you went to the hospital then, they was like, uh, yeah, that's to the death. We sorry. You're going to have to do something different. And when they, they got healed, that's why it was such a big miraculous thing when they got healed. This was like, it was no way he should have been doing that. Now, you know, Back in the 80s and the 90s, miracles was, whoa, whoa, yeah, we see what that's happening. That's, that's awesome. Now it's kind of getting died down. Because they're like, uh, you know, I done seen this person, you know, come out of that because of some, some medicine that they gave him. These pills work really good, so he probably has some good pills. But, you know, it's all getting watered down. You know, and that's because people don't believe that faith is important. They only want to believe in what, they, what they've been taught, what they see, what they can smell, and what they can touch. You know, that's why a lot of people were like, you know, I'm not going to listen. Why should I go listen to that man over there? I didn't, I didn't see him go to school. What, what, where's his credentials? That's what everybody wants to see now. They want to see, why do you feel like you should be honored enough to speak to me? 
And that's the big disconnect. That's what's going to hurt us all. Because, you know, God's got some people that's got some words for us that uh, we might not think it should be giving us a word. You know, you might have somebody come up and you like, hey, what, what's, what's happening, brother? You know what I'm saying? It's like, what up? You know, because this, this, and you're like, huh, oh, this, this dude, I don't like how he's talking. I, yeah, I, you're going to have to mess around. I know me. I'm the deal. If I hear that guy talking about something, yeah, I'm down there on uh, just Billy Bob down here. And I'm, right, I'm like, yeah, I don't think we even in the same category, bro. You, no. But see, he's teaching me that, you know, you can learn something from everybody. And the person that I, I might be sending you, he might need something from you just as bad as you need from him. So maybe you need to listen to what he has to say before you dismiss him. He's like, okay, well, you know, it, I, I'm going to be obedient. I'm not going to dismiss people just because of the way I think they should be or how they are. And, you know, a lot of times we say we're using our faith. You know, we're, I'm stepping out on faith. But the first thing we do is we kill our faith. Every time. Because we say, God has a blessing for me and it's coming. And that cup third, fourth week that ain't here, well, maybe God don't have a blessing for me. Maybe I wasn't supposed to get it. Maybe, maybe it was supposed to be something else. Maybe this is my test. You're killing your faith. God said when he says yes and amen, it's done. So if God is giving you a blessing, he's not going to dangle it out there. Ooh, too slow. Oh, you got to be faster than that. He ain't doing that. That's us. See, because he has a, a set plan for you to walk. You got to walk the walk. You can't say, I'm getting ready to get a blessing. You're supposed to be over here on this path, and you're over here. There's, there's something else over here. You might supposed to have, and you might not. But in order to get what you're supposed to, you got to get on the right path. You'll never do that if you're doing, you're thinking you're carnal mind. Because your mind's going to tell you, well, if he's going to give it to you, it should be right here, and it should look like this, and this is how it be. But that's not how that works. When you're in the spirit, God leads you. He leads you to what he wants you to do, which means you have to be obedient. You have to be able to hear the word and then do what it says. So that means when God said, when the spirit is telling you that little voice inside, get up and run. That means you got to get up and run. Even though you're like, I'm not getting up and running in front of all these crazy people. <laughs> They're not going to look at me and think that I'm one of them. No, we're going to be calm, cool, and collective. And, and I'm going to be, you know, Mr. Irvin. You know, sometimes you got to be a kid for God. Amen. And it's not because Amen. he wants to embarrass you. Yeah. It's not because he wants you to do something you feel like you can't do. It's because he wants your, your obedience to be better than your, your sacrifice. See, if he's telling you to do something, the more you do what he tells you to do, the more you start to hear his voice. Amen. And once you start to hear his voice... You start to move with him. Once you do that, you can take those spiritual blinders off. It's like spiritual training wheels. I, 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 that's a good analogy because I remember my mom used to tell me, take a run. Now, first time I was like, I, I only run if God tells me to run. I'm not going to run because you tell me to run. That's not, you know. And then we got into this, um, this leadership uh, conference and they started talking about uh, respecting and uh, honor and we, it, I mean we'd had a whole class of that and man that class was powerful it taught us how we were supposed to honor up and then honor down and so it was like you know you honor your pastor that means if he asks you to do something you do it and you believe that he's hearing from God and then if he's not you believe that God's going to chastise him not you then you honor the people under you because they're going to get from you what they need to give to them to get back to you. Come on, y'all. It's a full circle. And we're all operating together. It works perfect. But see, we don't want to see that part. I didn't want to see that part. I was like, no, she just want me to run because uh, so it'll make her look good. But see, she had the answer. She knew that once I started to be obedient, when he said, get a message ready for Pastor Ramon, I wouldn't be scared to get up here and do it because I was obedient. So all those times I ran around the church when I thought everybody was looking at me saying, that dude is stupid. 
it worked out in my favor because now I'm blessed and highly favored. Now I can get up in front of you having years of dyslexia and read to you and tell you what God's saying to you because it's not about me. I'm not doing this. This would not be my first choice. I'm a behind the scenes type person. Like my wife say, we are just content to be behind the scenes but taking care of everything. But say, see, sometimes God says do something that, that's uncomfortable. Because see, that's what's going to ignite your faith. It's, it's, um, it's funny because that, that, that's all of the fight. We fight it. We, we make it hard on ourselves because we kill our faith. We always try to figure, you know, and I don't think it's us, you know, trying to be lazy, but we always try to get the easiest way out. We don't want to go through hardships or pain, which I, I, I get it. Who would? That, that's just a human thing. The body does not like pain. You know, but see, that's why he says your light affliction mm, is but nothing, see? But he's not saying, let me give you this so you can feel this light affliction. He's just saying, look, some stuff is getting ready to happen because where you're at, that's how they're governed. But I'm telling you, just go through it. And once you get to the other side of it, you got breakthrough. You see, but we always automatically assume that, you know, well, not we. I'm not going to put myself in that. A lot of people think that that means God's putting some stuff on them. That's not the father that I serve. Because he says, I know the plans for my people. They're for good, not evil, to give them an expected end. That means good things are from God. Bad things are from Satan. Plain and simple. You know, people have thought about that all day. Don't say that's from the devil because you did it. Regardless of that, it's bad, so it's birth from the devil. You see, all this stuff happened when Satan tried to put himself over Christ. That entered sin into the, into the equation. There was no evil. Because light can't, light can't abide with darkness. When Satan came and started doing what he was doing, all of a sudden entered darkness. And so that's why it had to be expelled from Christ. So see, bad's got to be from, he's got to be the, the author and the, the finisher of the bad stuff. Just like the father is the author and the finisher of the good. So it would be kind of futile for us to say, God is putting us through the test. That ain't God. But you know what? Let's read it. I'll give you, I'll give you a scripture for that. It's in Corinthians 4, 16 and 18. Now it says, for which cause was faith not, for which cause was faith not, but through our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceedingly and external weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to look at that in the, in the Amplified. Like mom says, we need to get screamed at for a minute. You know, amplifiers is just put everything on blast. Woo! You know, it's like, you know, it's like what, you, what the? Yeah, put it on blast a little bit so you can hear it a little bit better. So 4 and 16, and it says, Therefore, we do not become dis, disencouraged, <clears throat> spiritually exhausted, and wearied out through the fear through our outer man is progressively by decaying and wasting away yet our inner self is being progressively renewed day by day I'm sorry these words are really small and it says for our light <coughs> monetary afflictions this against distress or any passing hour is every more and more abundantly preparing and producing and achieving for us an everlasting weight of glory beyond all measure, ext extremely 
suppressing all comp um, comparisons and all communications, a vast and translating glory and blessingness never to cease. Since we consider and look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen, far and that we are visible and temporal, belief and fleeting, but the things that are eternal are everlasting. Whew, man, I'm going to have to get a bigger Bible, boy. That's, I'm going to get some glass. I might have to stand up here with some. And the pastor said, let me move my glasses. Yeah, see, I might have to get some of them. But basically what that's saying is that stuff that we're feeling, all of that little stuff inside, that, that hurt, that pain, that's all fleeting. And it's a feeling. Because what's going to happen on the other side of that is going to be miraculous. But we just got to get to it. And see, sometimes our carnal mind will tell us, oh, that's, that's it. There's no way you can get out of that. But see, once you get over into the spiritual, it starts saying, okay, well, we can get out of that. We are going to get out of that. And so when you start doing that, all of a sudden, that other path starts to open up for you. You start to see it. You know, oh, okay, well, let me step over here. Because now, I'm going to go home and do what Jesus told me to do. That makes it a whole lot different. So, basically, in order to get that, you have to make your faith look like Jesus' faith, God's faith, the Father's faith. That's a hard task because God is God. So, of course, everybody want to be like, well, there ain't no way I can make my faith look like his. You know, he just spoke some stuff in the existence and it just, it just was. But see, you can. And it's a very simple thing to do. All you have to do is shut off your mind. Now, you say, okay, you said it's simple, but, you know, I, you know, me, uh, uh, the the family was talking just last night, and um, my my daughter was saying, you know, hey, did you know? Did you know that there is a that you can uh, you can speak to your, you speak to yourself inside your mind. Your mind have an actual voice, and I never really thought about it that way. But then I'm starting to, you know, so I start to think. Am I hearing what I'm thinking? Or, you know, and we all start doing it. And you know, we found out that some folks in our family, we they actually hear their thoughts. So that means they'll be thinking something and actually somebody talking. So there's people talking and so you hey, hey, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. You know, you almost, it's almost like talking to yourself. And some people just see the thought. There's no converse, there's no, no, no conversation. So they're looking at the word. Some people hear the word, which makes that a lot harder because now you understand why people have you know, certain mental issues. You're hearing, so that means you're hearing two or three conversations at once. And then you're trying to distinguish how you're going to, what you're going to say next while you're having a conversation while the other person inside your head is having another conversation. So that's deep. And so at first, you know, I was like, oh man, I'm one of them people. You know, I hear my, I hear my thoughts. But then it was like, well, but wait, I didn't hear that word. You know, I seen the word. I actually seen the action. You know, we say, look, car. I didn't see the word car. I seen a car. So that lets me know that your mind is always going to fight against what's going, what the spirit is saying. It's trying to muzzle out your spirit so it can say what it wants to say to keep you in a spot. But not because your mind is trying to hurt you. It's because your mind, like I said, is conditioned to this world. So the only thing it knows is, look, if you walk to the edge of the roof and you jump, you're going to fall and you're going to be in pain. But see, if you can get over into that spiritual, you can walk to that edge and get ready to fall off and God tell you, get back, and you get back. That's the reason why you hear these, these women who the kids are trapped in the cars picking up these thousand pound cars. Or why uh, the other day I had a refrigerator get ready to fall on me 
and I push it over to the side. But see, it wasn't me. It was me in the spirit. It was me in the spirit for God to be able to maneuver my body to the spot where it needed to be. <laughs> because I had prayed that day and I knew there was an attack. Just the reason, the way the, the, the whole work day was going. Oh, the devil after me today. Let me try something. Let me, get, let me get down and pray. Okay, and then once I got finished praying, I, I could feel the spirit saying, you know what, you need to do some things different. You need to do this. You need to do that. So as I'm sitting there and it happened to be a day I was by myself, so, you know, it wasn't no, you know, my partner D back there. It wasn't no D, man. What are you doing? Yeah. Grab the fridge. What's up? <coughs> it was me all by myself. So once I got ready to pull it off, so I'm just move away. Move away, and that sucker said, boom. I was like, man, that was supposed to be me. And of course then, you know, you have accidents all the time, so you're just looking at it like, oh, it was just an accident. But see, there is no real accidents. There's no coincidences. Because the devil's not playing. He's not out here um, confused and don't understand, you know, why he's going through what he's going through. He is defeated. He has lost. So his only job now is to get some of us to come with him because he is that mad at God. And, you know, I think we think that, you know, he's misled. You know, may, you know I've had somebody say, you know, what if, you know, Satan could have had a, you know, a different chance? What if he could have been forgiven? The Bible says everybody should be forgiven. Why not Satan? And it's like, you know, that's a hard thing to kind of uh, get people to just be justified with because everybody's wanting to be like, you know, well, I, I don't feel like God, if God loved us, why he would put us in these situations or do this or do that or why not, you know, give Satan a way out because, you know, he, in, he invented everything, so why can't he invent the way out? But see, that's not how that works. God operates on our free will. And so anything that we want or we say, he said, I'll give it to you. I've already done it, but I can't give it to you. You have to take it because it's a, by birthright. So if you say you are my child, you're just supposed to take it. Because I guarantee you this, if you're Bill Gates' child, you're not going up to Bill Gates and, Daddy, I need some money. You're going up to Bill Gates and say, you're a uh, uh, checking account 3745, Bill Gates' son. You know, that's how we're supposed to come to God. We don't see the evidence yet, but we know it's there because he said it's there. So go get it. If it's out there for you, if you can see it, you can get it. You know, but, you know, do we believe what we say? You know, we can say all day that, you know, I'm, I'm a child, I'm a God's child. I can get this, I can get that. You know, um, sometimes it ain't, you know, it ain't that simple. I know I've seen things that my mom has believed for for years, and she hasn't gotten them. But has she given up? No. And I mean, uh, to the point of sometimes where I was like, okay, you, you've been, yeah, that's probably not going to happen. Probably need to go and get that one up. But she's like, mm-mm, it, it, it's, it's coming. I remember when I was first, you know, getting into the, the Christian thing, you know, I used to hear all these pastors say, you know, God's coming back. Jesus is coming. I even have seen one say, Jesus is coming in about 10 years. I was like, okay. Got to that fifth year. First, the first time, I really, it scared me because, I, was, you know, I was, they, I, I was young. I didn't understand. So I'm thinking, oh, my God, you know, what all I got to do? Am I, am I okay? <laughs> am I going to make it? What's, what's happening? You know, and so... God didn't come back. Hmm. Okay. Second time, God didn't come back. But that third time, was it getting to be a teenager? Stuff ain't real. People, uh, people, man, people been saying that for years. I remember seeing a, a documentary one time, and black and white, and Jesus is coming back. You know, but see, that's because I didn't have any faith. You so I, I hadn't been cultivated in 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 spiritual gifts and, you know, learning how to walk in them. So, of course, that's where we're at today. Everybody's been hearing the same story, the same thing that we've been saying over and over. 
And the other part of that is they ain't really seen no fruits of any blessings. All they see is the church busting and disgusting. Them on the front lines fighting and the church back here, we'll pray for you, brother. You know, that's not how that, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be front and center. That means when something's going on, when something's happening, the church should be the first one out there, first responders. What do you need? What can I do for you? Let's, let's dial that situation down a little bit. Because that's not what Christ, what would Jesus do? You know, it's hard for a corrupt politician, a corrupt policeman, anybody, to just act stupid and crazy with you when you quote the scriptures at them. When you say, well, brother, I just love you. You know, God said, God this. Yeah, they're going to be a little bit at first, you know, whatever. Blah, blah. But after a while, you can't fight with that. If you ever notice, you just go up to a bunch of people when they're arguing and you keep saying stuff about God, they're going to be, oh, my God, this dude, man. But after a while, you'll see them start to go, yeah, okay, whatever, man, this is good, fine, I'm sorry. That's not because of you. That's because of that spirit. It starts to work. It starts to pull from that. It starts to see, hey, I know what you need. I got what you need. Just, just, just call. Just talk. Just, just let me know what you want. And all of a sudden, that spirit starts to break. Now, it's still going to be a little disobedience in there because that person's strong will. So it ain't going to just say, oh, well, give it all to me. It's going to say, okay, well, you know what? We're good. I'll let it alone. And then he's going to go and he's going to think and he's going to like, man, this is something about that dude. And he's going to keep it going, keep it going. Until finally he's going to go, you know what? I want to figure out why he was the way he was. Why he got what he got. You know, sometimes it's going to be a little bit different. And they're going to be like, you know, whatever, I don't want none of that. That's stupid. You stupid. Get out of my face. But see, the other side of that is it still de-escalated the situation. Because when you're in the spirit, you start to walk the way he wants you to walk. Man, I, I, that's a lesson that I had to learn that, uh, whoo. I, I used to get, it used to be funny because my girls would be like, you know, every once in a while I come home and, you know, I play a, a, a song that wasn't so uh, spiritually uplifting. Or I'd had a bad day and I'm saying a, the word that ain't really so old. I remember one time I said, uh, I'm peeved. Oh, my girls was like, Dad, you, can, you can't say that. I'm like, for what you want to be like, I am a grown man. I can say what I want to say. And it's like, you, but it's your kids. So when they're like, oh, I'm disappointed. Now you're like, oh, man, I can't do that no more. But then you start to think, well, why come everybody else can say crazy stuff? And I, I say it, and they look at me like, oh, my God, I'm going there. What's going on? But see, I started to understand. That's how my girls seen me. They saw me as... There's one thing that I don't have to worry about, and it's him losing his control with God. Or him saying and listening to the wrong thing because he's always going to do it. And it, had to, it took a minute for me to get to that spot where I was like, it ain't fair. Now it's a blessing. It's an honor. You know, I still mess up sometimes, but it's a, you know, and I can be like, you know, hey, look, I'm sorry I said that, and I didn't, but, you know, I was, I was a little upset. I'm working on it. And it can be different. Before, it couldn't be different because I was like, I don't want to hear that. I, I, should be, I should be allowed to have what I want when I want it. But we got to understand, we can't, we're not living for ourselves anymore. So we can't have them selfish moments. We have to do it the way that God wants us to do it. So in order for us to do that, there's three steps that we have to do. That if we can get them down, it'll be cake work. The first one is we got to stop. We have to stop saying the wrong things. So that means when you say, when, let's just say, pastor gives you a word and says, Jesus said that you're getting ready to get a brand new car. That means you're going to, when you say, all right, I'm jumping on board and I believe what you say, the month gone by, the two month gone by, the third month gone by, and you're sitting there and you're like, well, maybe I wasn't supposed to get that car. You have just killed your faith. 
got to stop. You know how long you need to believe? Because that's a lot, a lot of people say, I've been believing forever and I ain't got nothing. So you know how long you're supposed to? You know when you're supposed to stop? Never. You, if there's something you believe, like my mom, she is believing that all her kids is in the same spot at the same time. Now, if you ask me, she might be waiting for a minute. But how long is she going to believe until the day Jesus comes back for her? And you know what? That is, that's an awesome, faithful thing to have. And, there, and, and the thing is, to get all of your stuff, like there's some things that, that, and I, you know, I love my mom, and I hope when she hears this, she'll be like, wow. But I believe there are some things that she doesn't have that faith with. That that situation is teaching her to get that faith for. Yeah, I know me, I know. There's a lot of things. Like right now, I can tell you, I, 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 use, I do not get sick. I've, I've said that from day one. It, and there's been a couple of times that the devil is, this, has got me sick. And it makes you take a step back and like, whoa, God, what's going on? And it's like, you know, hey, you can't have what you say you have and not be tested. It's not me testing you. It's, it's him because you're down there with him. But if you just walk your line, I got you. You're all good. You'll come out on the other side and, and we'll keep continue going. But see, usually when we get that opposition from anything, we automatically start to dis dismiss what God told us we could have. And it's not because of the situation, it's because of our mind. So the second one is we got to look. We got to look at what God has already done for our lives. So that means all those little things that, you know, people will say, you know, oh, that's, that's my new, that's not an even, even big thing. You know, oh, he paid your water bill last week, or oh, whatever. You need to start looking at those little things because all of a sudden they start to add up to big things. They start to add up to, if you hadn't have got that done, this would have happened. And if this would have happened, that would have happened. But see, he went over here, he took care of that little bitty thing that, in, that sparked that whole thing to move a different way. And once you can start to get to that, all of a sudden it changes the way you perceive the spirit. It's not something that's not tangible that you can't touch. You can touch the spirit. Which is what I, why we're trying to get you to operate in your faith. Because once you touch the spirit, I, I guarantee you, that's all you'll want to do. It won't be nothing for you to get up and do a dance, do a jump, do a run. None of that. Because you're going to touch that other side. And then the last thing is just to listen. You just got to listen to the Holy Spirit. That little small voice inside of you that's telling you, yeah, you know you surely shouldn't be doing that. You should really turn the corner. You really should not go today. That's the most important one. You know, how many people can say, you know, I was getting ready to go to church and God stopped me and told me, just chill out, just stay home, we'll get it next week. And everybody else is like, oh, God ain't going to tell you not to go to church. But you know what? It's happened. I know their mom has a story, and it's a pretty powerful story. She told it a couple of times, but... There was a man who was supposed to be doing a, uh, a meeting, and I think it was in the Virgin Islands or somewhere. Um, but there was a big uh, storm coming, and all of his other people went to church. They had already gotten there, and he was like, oh, I'm going to stay, and I'm going to study for a little bit. He was studying. He couldn't get into it. Something was going on, and, you know, finally God was saying, you need to stay at home. Well, of course, he was like, oh, get behind me, Satan. You know, which is what we're all of us, oh, he, come on, he ain't going to tell me not to go to church. But, you know, he, he did not go. And where they, wherever they were going or the, the, the passage between or whatever, uh, if he had been on it, it was totally destroyed. And it's, it's situations like that that you're like, if you're not listening and if you can't hear the spirit, you'll totally ruin your life. Because all he's doing is directing you. He's, he's got the path there, and his spirit is what guides you. It, it's hand in hand with you. It's like, come on, let's walk over here. But see, what happens is we're like, oh, wait a minute, I want to go over here and see what's up on this side because it looks a little bit easier. And then you get over here, you know, left your spirit over there. That's the stupidest thing we could ever do. We leave the spirit, leave the spirit at home on, on the counter. And it's over there, we over here, and we walk in, and all of a sudden we fall into every pit stop. It's like, oh, my God, you left me. 
Oh, Jesus, I don't know what I've done to deserve. But he's over here. I'm still over here. I just need you to get back on track. You know, of course, he's really patient with us. So he's like, I'm here, bro. I'm here. But I know if it was my God, I, he's probably over there like, oh, my God. Would you? What is wrong with you? I've told you. Come, get over here. That's how he talked to me because, you know, we, we, we have a personal relationship. I hope y'all got a personal relationship because he'll talk to you how you, how you talk. You know, and it's like I said when I first started, I ain't, probably ain't going to hear that guy. I was like, come on down here, this Billy Bob. I'm not going to hear that. But see, he, he talks to me like, come on, dude. What's wrong with you, bro? Get up in there. Do what you're supposed to do. But um, if we can get those things down, those three things right there, we got to stop, we got to look, and we got to listen. If we can do that, we'll start to activate our faith, put our faith into action. You know, and that's what this series is about. And it's, you know, man, it's been, it's been a powerful season, series. You know, Pastor, you know, reminds me, Pastor Don and um, Pastor Greg, they just lit it on fire to make it easier to just walk in. And, you know, I could have just really just put some notes together and just kind of just rolled rode their wave and just been like, okay, we good. But man, you know, I do, I hope y'all got something. I hope y'all got a, understand, a little bit more of an understanding on how to put it in action and what it's, what it's really containing. It's not, you know, a, um, a tangible lesson. It's not something that you can touch or see. It's, it's all about your mentality. It's all about breaking down that mindset. And that's the, the biggest disconnect that we all have because everybody's like, you know, my mind's good and boom, 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 I believe this, I believe that. And it's hard to get people to understand <coughs> everything that you think is important. The way you think it is going to make the way you produce what it is that you're trying to get. If you can think it in the spirit, then you're going to get spiritual things. But if you think it of the world, it's always going to be a worldly outcome. You know, if you trying to figure out how you're going to make the $1,500 that you need for your mortgage or your car payment, you're going to go out and you're going to be, you probably work hard or, you know, then you need to, you know, do three or four jobs and come home tired because you've worked every day. But if you can get over there into that spirit, God will start telling you, okay, I need you to, to go down the street. I need you to Say hello to that person. And when you do, how that person's like, you know what? I got the, I just got a notion that God just wants me to give you this. You see, that's what I miss. I miss seeing people get blessed and they're like, you know, oh my God, I don't understand. And me see it and know what it's coming from. Like, whoa, look at God. Look at Jesus. It ain't no way. You know, I can't wait for the day that, you know, somebody in here mortgage gets paid off. I seen that. Somebody in here get a brand new car. Come, come to church with a friend. Don't nobody know this person, and all of a sudden leave with a brand new car. Come on, y'all. You know, only God does things like that. You know, he, th you see these people out here that's uh, on these Facebooks and all that, and they, you know, they doing all this stuff, giving people money, and get on and walking up to these random people. But see, they're just walking up to random people that's just sitting there. You know. When you bring it to the church, these people in here asking God for stuff. They ain't telling people that they got these needs because, you know, us Christian people, we are proud people. There ain't nobody going to see me going through something. You know, it's hidden. So when God works in the church, God's working. Because there ain't nobody, everybody's tight-lipped. Might the pastor might know. Maybe. Sometimes. Other than that, hush lips. How you doing, brother? I am blessed and highly favored. <laughs> the Lord loves his son. You know? Oh, okay. Well, that brother, well, how can I get where you get? Oh, I, I don't know. Well, what's wrong? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, I'm good. Okay, so you, you better know where your help's coming from. You know, now sometimes there's some churches that, you know, and I'm sorry to say it, but some churches you do got to be like that because church going to be like, uh, what should I do? Oh, brother, ain't nothing you can do. You might as well hang that one up. I'm sorry. You know, I'm not going to lie. You know, I had a, 
I had a very prominent pastor told me, uh, you can't have what you asked for. Now, I would like to believe that that was just his faith trying to get me to operate my faith. But I think it might have been a little bit of the other. Just, my brother just really believed I couldn't have what I thought I could have. And I remember when I broke, I was like, man, you know, maybe, maybe he's right. You know, boy, I love my mama. Y'all better have y'all get you somebody on your side that got some spiritual uh, guidance. Because they'll pull you out of some devastating spots. Because when she was like, what do you want, boy? Well, I mean, she's like, well, you need to figure out what it is you want first. And then once you figure that out, we can go get it from God. She didn't say God might move, God might bless. She said, find out what you want, and then let's go get it from God. Have somebody that can tell you how to get to your provision. Because we can look for our provision all day long. I was doing it on my own. I, I, I need to do this. That didn't work. Oh, man. Lord, I'm back at your feet, and I need you to do this. All right, do this. Okay. That didn't work. I'm just going to do it my way. That didn't work. Lord, I'm back at your feet. You know what? It's like you need to figure one of these out. What you want to do? You do one or the other. You can't do both. And that's what that's our problem. But, you know, uh, I don't blame anybody in the, in the church. It, it's hard. It's hard to, to figure out if it's your spirit or your head. It's no one's perfect. No one's got the whole answer. You're good. Somebody is struggling with something all the time. And if they're telling you not, they're living a perfect life, they're lying. It's not going to happen. Because God told us that we're, we're sinners born in grace that is moving, ever growing. So if we're ever growing, that means we're not grown. We're getting to a spot, not have arrived at a spot. Well, you don't arrive at a spot until you're with him in heaven. So anybody that's got all of the answers, you probably should run from them. Because they're going to lead you somewhere you ain't supposed to be. That's why we got these people out here. To, uh, yes, we are the brothers of the white cloth living up here. And um, we don't believe that there is a heaven and a hell. We believe that, the, yeah, that, that's, that's good. That ain't what my words say. The, those people, they see, they've got too much information. They think they know everything. So now they're all up on this high pedestal. This, this ain't enough for them. So now they done created some stuff. Well, this must mean that because this is this, then we're going to go here. That's not, that's not what the word said. So get you some people, some spiritual folks that understand the way that God is wanting them to move and move that way. Now, the last thing I have for you is it, it's, a, it's a quote. And uh, it's a quote by Mark Hankins. And it's, uh, faith can move mountains, but it won't move anything until it moves you. And then the last thing is the first thing it, it should move is your mouth. You say, if, if you say you got faith, then that means you should be speaking something. Because, see, uh, the word, this whole Christianity is voice activated. It's not just some, you know, you type it out and sin. No, that ain't how this works. That means you got to say some stuff with your mouth. You got to engage because that's how God did it. That's how he set it up. God spoke us into the existence and it was, it, whoa, it happened. We're his seed. So our authority is to speak to a situation, to get it to move. You see, but, you know, you can say all day, I'm about, I'm about to move a mountain. That means you're going to have to get out there and look funny talking to that mountain that you want to move. That means when you're sick and you you got a tumor sitting right here, and then you're like, I'm highly favored, and I'm blessed, and I'm, I'm good. And the people's like, uh, you got a big old appendage hanging off the side of you. What are you talking about? I don't see that. That ain't what my God said. My God said that these things shall fall off. So I'm believing it's going to fall off. I promise you, you do it enough, it's going to happen. Especially if you start to believe it in your head, which is what we're doing. Everything that you do spiritually is to get you to start believing what you say, what you speak. So then once you start to believe it, you start to speak it more. Then it's just a domino effect. All those things work together. 
You're just pushing and pulling, pushing and pulling until all of a sudden it becomes routine and the words that you speak produce your breakthrough. Amen. Well, thank you guys for listening. You know, um, I don't, I don't know if, um, if there's anything that anybody uh, needs for more understanding, but whatever it is, you know, I know the pastor operates in the spirit. You know, his wife, you know, Kim, she's not going to get up here and say nothing, but she will talk to you personally by yourselves. She don't want no, she don't want no crowds either. Um, but, you know, that should be our main, that should be our focus. Not to just have good church, not to just someone spoke good. We need to be teaching and understanding how to move from glory to glory. You know, God has so many blessings in store for this church, but we have to move a certain way to get to him. He's given us some just because it's like, you know what, the remnants of blessing, when you move the way I tell you to move, it's just going to overflow. So you're going to get some of it, but that's not the full potential of where you can be. You're going to have to speak some stuff to get to the other side. And if we could do that, man, this church is going to be so... I mean, amazing. It's already amazing. So imagine what it's going to be like when that happens. Yeah. So we need to start to understand the way to get there. And we need to be more diligent on teaching how to get there. I know we've had in, in a while um, in the works a discipleship and a, um, a couple of classes that we were going to do and you know COVID came and you know a lot of that you know just kind of fell by the wayside but I believe that stuff is getting ready to start happening again and um, I believe with that are the keys to everybody having the ability to walk out of here and set some people on fire and I'm you know I can't wait for it I'm telling y'all I'm it's it's a blessing to see people just get totally just the things that they've hoped for dreamed for to walk in total here I mean the first time you see somebody with, um, with stuff happening to their body and then someone just with some prayer just come up and touch it, and that stuff fall off, man, that does some, that does some crazy stuff for your faith. It, it'll have you walking out doing some stuff that, you know, people are like, that man was crazy, but, good, but God blessed him in the end. That's because he was walking in faith. You know, it's like it takes, it takes some moxie to do what the pastor's getting ready to have to do with a couple of minutes. I'm, I'm with you, though, brother. Hey, even if you was going to go down, we're going down together, bro, because I believe, I believe what the Spirit say. I'm, I'm going to go. You know, hey, hey, I'm telling you, pastor can't take no runner right here around me running. I'm just going to tell you like that. That's the honor thing. Y'all should not let a pastor get out there all by himself praying for some folks. You know, our job is to be behind this man. So that means if he gets up to get ready to pray, we should be fighting over these pews to get over there by and pray with some people. That's how that, that's supposed to work. But um, I love you guys, and I want to see spiritual blessings for everybody, the, the same blessings that I've seen, the ones that I'm wanting to see. Because, man, like I said, it just does so, so much for your soul, for your spirit. It gets you to a higher level. And, you know, obviously it just gets you healed. So... I believe that with the last of the ending of this service, it's going to be some crazy stuff happening. God is going to move. And I think the past is going to be in a whole different level, which is going to cause us to be in a whole different level. And I believe this church is going to get set on fire. So thank you guys for listening. And that's me. Come on, Restoration Church Toss. Y'all can do better than that. Come on, this man... This man is not cut out. He thought he couldn't come up here and speak, but God's using him. All right, we're going to close the service. If you guys will stand with me, I got to give you guys a warning. Uh, what he spoke on today was, was good because, you know, when we first got to this church, before we were asked the pastor, my wife and I, we knew we were going to buy a new house. You know how long it took us to get that house? Five years. We even had a moment where it was like, well, maybe God wants us to stay here. Like, no, stop it. I told you you were going to get a new house. And then when we get the house, even today, we go in our house, we're like, I can't believe we need it. This is all God. It's not us. But I say that just to remind you that God is working, still working. He's a miracle worker. 
And I also want to warn you guys. Next week is a healing service. God asked me to close this series with a healing service, meaning people are going to be healing. That means I have to get out of my comfort zone, and he's telling me to heal people. I'm like, God, you talking to me? He wants me to heal people. That means if you have any ailments in your body, you're going to be healed next week. You got to come with your faith, though. Your faith has to be in action. He's telling me their people are going to get breakthrough. They're going to get the answers they finally wanted. How about this? If you know somebody, this is your job, your assignment. You got two assignments. You're not going to like them. But you got to put your faith in action. The first assignment is you got to invite somebody that you know needs healing. Okay, next week. Whew, I'm putting myself out there. But I'm being obedient. I'm putting my faith in action. Got to invite somebody, bring somebody. The second thing is you're not going to like this one. You got to fast this week. Uh-huh. You got to fast something this week. Why? Because God is saying the reason he always tells us, if, especially he said to tell you that if you didn't fast at the beginning of the year when he asked us to fast so that we can move things this year, here's your opportunity to get it right. But he wants us to fast just for seven days from today into next Sunday. And when you do your fast, you are cleansing yourself. You're moving things out of the way so that you can get whatever it is you need. Your healing, your breakthrough, your financial breakthrough, your relationship breakthrough, whatever it is that you need, you got to come prepared. Now, don't come next week expecting something and you didn't do the work. Okay? God can still work in that. He'll, he'll work with those knuckleheads. But I'm just telling you, if you really want your breakthrough, you got to put your faith in action. Amen. Amen. It is such a blessing to be here today. Thank you, Kenny, for that word. Thank you, Kenny, for the word. Hallelujah. I told you guys this was going to be a deep dive, one of my most dynamic series, because I knew I thought it was just going to be dynamic because of the studying and the different angles from different pastors. But God's taken us even deeper. Healing service? What is that? I've never done that before. Let me just put that out there. But I'm just going to do whatever God tells me to do. Amen? So I'm going to pray right now for us all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your word today. Thank you, Father, for this series. Thank you for us waking up this morning. Thank you for those watching online. Thank you for those in the building. Thank you for those who are coming to this place. Thank you for those who are lined up waiting to come, who, who are just waiting for the release, dear Heavenly Father. And that release is this church's obedience. In everything we do, not just some things. Thank you that you have presented in this church and brought about obedient people. People who are ready and willing to do your work. I thank you right now, Father, for those people in this building. And I thank you for those who you are about to add to us. And right now, I pray a special anointing and blessing over those in this building and watching online that you will begin revealing to them the things that they need to fast from this week. Revealing to them the things that they need to cleanse from their minds, cleanse from their hearts, cleanse from their spirits and their souls so that they can hear from you clear as day this week. And they can receive whatever you have for them next week. I know there's some thinking, Lord, I don't need nothing. I'm going to be good, but I'll be here. And they're going to still receive something, dear Heavenly Father. Re reveal it to them as they go throughout the week and they're obedient and trusting you in fasting. Thank you, Father, for even though it's a last-minute request from you, you're teaching us how to just go when you say go and do what you say do and just be there to do your work, dear Heavenly Father. So right now, I pray a special anointing and blessing over each and every person in this building and online that you would bless their families, their vehicles, their houses, their children, their pets, their businesses, whatever they touch. Right now, let it be covered in the blood of your son, Jesus. Let that anointing fall wherever these people are, not just in this church building or the parking lot, church parking lot, but wherever they may be, let your anointing follow and let it fall. In your son Jesus' name I pray this. Amen. And before we get out of here, we have to do God's work. We have to start now. And so if there's anybody in this room who has not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, raise your hand. We're going to pray for you. We're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to belittle you. We're just going to bless you. Hallelujah. If that's not you, if there's someone online, there's always somebody online who needs to put your hand emoji in the, uh, the chat. We want to pray for you. And you're not going to pray alone. The church is going to pray with you. Amen.
So let us pray right now. If you pray this prayer, hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. And today I repent of all of my sins. And I choose Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior from this day forward. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you prayed that prayer, get in touch with us. We want to follow up with you. Get in touch with us on our social media emails and all of that good stuff. God bless. Thank you for watching our broadcast today. We hope that you were tremendously blessed and that you had an opportunity to grow closer to God through his son, Jesus. And we would also love to partner with you in prayer. If there is anything that we could assist you with regarding a prayer or something we can partner with you in your prayers, just send us an email to restorationchurchtulsa at gmail.com and we will join you in prayer. Until the next time we meet, God bless.